see a cool feature. So what, what do you, when did you leave? What, you, you know, yeah, right. Sorry, what's your program for the rest of the day? Have you got? So you have a break at 12, yeah. Okay. So budgeting. So why start here rather than the business plan is basically you've got a, an understand if, if, if the deal's going to, or what you're going to do is going to be viable. So the good thing, yeah, this is where I would start, um, is, was working out the budget and I mean, it's just a quite, they try to get the budget to meet your plan, not, not a plan to meet your budget. So, um, yeah. It, and budgeting is, is, is an, it's, it's, it's a rough guide. Um, and as you go, when you first start out in business, you rely heavily on your budgeting because you've got no track record or no previous experience of that property or that business. But as you get in, involved in the business, Basically, budgeting becomes easier because you just look at what well, what did I spend last year, or what did we do last year, etc. But when you're first starting up, you do have to spend a lot of time on that budgeting, and um, we'll talk a little bit more about that and how it's going to apply to your project. But yeah, it's it's, it's a management um, function. Um, one of the things, um, and, and when you do budgets, you can evaluate obviously the consequences of different options that you do if you're planning different varieties or high end. Um, you know, you're going to uh, have a really, you know, not, as I say, not a real expert on horticulture, but if you're having a real, um, a, you're wanting to produce a premium crop, obviously your yield's going to be down, but your your price per tonne is going to be up. And, and so what are the consequences of going for that as opposed to growing as much as you can and just selling it on the on the, on the the open market or without a contract, etc. cetera. Um, and obviously the budget's good for analysing or currently, if there's any current management problems, um, and it might highlight some new opportunities for you. Oh, I can use this, can I? I can use one. Okay, so what we're doing is a cash forecast budget. Um, so it's estimating your future income and expenditure, um, but it doesn't include non cash transactions, which uh, is depreciation. Um, do they do any stuff with financial statements and understanding about you know, accounts and stuff? I can't think of today. Or, yeah, or do they in, in, in their course at all? No. No, no, no that's right. No. So we won't talk, and do they, have they done anything on taxation or anything like that? No. no. Okay. Um, but yeah, it examines the viability of a business over a period of time. And you obviously prepare it prior to the beginning of the season or the financial year. Uh, but a budget, Day you do a budget, it's outdated because things change all the time. So it's a matter of keeping it up to date. We'll talk a bit more about that. Um, yeah, you want to err on the conservative side. So aim for the maybe the worst or the me not the worst case scenario. But don't be too optimistic, um, if, especially if you're preparing it for a bank. Um, yeah, as I say, you modify it um, as more actual information becomes available. And it's obviously uh, over a 12 month period and for a financial year. So, what, in your experience, what, what are most vineyards' financial years? Are they 31st of March or June or? Uh, 30 June. 30 June? Um, and that sort of ties in, doesn't it? Because you've, you've harvested everything and then your new season starts. You don't start pruning until after June anyway, do you? Yeah, exactly. So, so that's a good time. So, again, you balance the eight. So this might be 30th of June, so I'll, I'll let's so assume that you're going to do that. So end of the financial year. Yes, so that's 30th of June. Which is different, because tax years go to end of March. Or, well for personal, but you, you, that's your financial year and tax years are yeah, same. Yeah, but they may be... They uh, may yeah, be as a salary, or as a uh, salary, you know, my balance state's 30, 31st of March, yeah. Dairy farmers are 31st of May, mainly. Pit fruit guys are 31st of December, which is a lot of them. Their financial year and the way they work their tax. So, there are only estimates, so you round off. So, when you think your pruning is going to cost you $3,323.50, well, you know, you just round that up to 3500 
that's what we talk about there. In reality, use um, historical, uh, as I say, budgeting becomes easier the more you get into involved in your business. Um, so what 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 sources of information are there available for you guys to, to know what um, pruning cost is per vine or um, spraying costs are per hectare or anything like that? Do you, do you know where you might be able to get that sort of information from? So, obviously, you're a, it's a greenfield business. This is so you haven't. It's not like you're buying an existing vineyard that's up and running. You could actually ask the owner. I mean, I don't want to see. You could say to the owner, well, well, you should look at that when you buy the business anyway. But can I just see what your income and your cost of production is? I don't know. Don't need to know, or don't want to know what your debt is and how much you take personally out of the business. But I just want to know those figures. So that would be a way of getting that information. But this you're not, so you're going to have to go off some, uh, yeah, talk, talk to other people within the industry and get some ideas. Uh, contractors, you might want to know what your pruning costs are, so you might just ring a couple, of, and they'll give you a price per vine, don't they, normally? Something like I guess I can deal with my contracts I deal with right now. Yeah. Which is me. You're the but contractor. I do everything, but we have some subcontracts. Yeah. I just want to show you now, which is on the side, and if you can just have a look at that. Um, so we're just going to skip out of that and go back into. As I pull this off the, um, this is the maths. Well, it was called math back then. Uh, it's now called the Ministry of Primary Industry. And this was in 2009. But if we just go down a bit. Here we are. Well, there's this marble one. I've got a Hawke's Bay one, I think. Have you seen this stuff before, Bob? No. Uh, here we are, Hawke's Bay. Basically, what I'd suggest you do is this is how you should be setting up your. Um, well, actually, it's not this slide; it's actually the next one. When you set up your build your spreadsheet, this is again you're going to have to update it for inflation. As this was in 2009. But I would basically, um, if you've got your spreadsheet here, you're going you're gonna to be actually doing two budgets. You're going to be doing, um, it's going to take you three, four years before, year four, before you're up to full production. Is that right, John? Um, year four, well, yeah, that's, that's actually up to them to decide. So if yeah, yeah, yeah. budgets and probably the one to start with is to start with the uh, one in this what I call the steady state budget or the status quo and that's when everything's up and running okay so if you look at that um, um, th this is really good because this is just giving you some ratio they've broken it down this is the Hawke's Bay so what this is this cut has come from the Ministry of Primary Industries and what they do is they they put it, do a vineyard model, um, a model budget for a, uh, a typical Hawke's Bay vineyard. And why they do that, they're doing it for, tech, uh, for the government for so the Treasury know roughly, well, the vineyards are going to have a good year this year, so we, you know, tax 
we're going to have a good year tax-wise or they're having a really bad year, so we can't expect a lot of um, uh, tax or a lot of these vineyards to pay tax. Um, so that's, that's basically the reason that they do all this sort of stuff. Um, but it's really helpful for, for the industry as well. Um, but you can see here they've broken it down per hectare and, and per tonne and per vine what, the, what their income is. Okay, you'll know what your per tonne value is, obviously, because um, you're going to have a contract price. Is that right? They're going to be yeah, yeah. So you've signed a contract with a with a, with a winery to do that. So what I suggest you do is you lay your lay your um, budget exactly like this. So you've got your income, and you've got other vineyard income, and you might have other income, because what you might be able to do is um, in before you get full production. Or, or you might actually be able to graze some of your land out for lamb traders or something like that, so you might include that. And then you've got your vineyard working expenses, which we'll come back to, but this is the order to do it, So, and this is the sort of a standard format that everyone uses. And then you have your operating surplus there, 48,000. Um, and then down below that you have your interest, your rent if you're paying any. Um, well, depreciation is here, but we'll just... Keep that aside, as I say, we're not including that in there. Um, and then that, that'll be what your um, vineyard um, or vineyard profit is. And then we have taxation and stuff like that. We'll, we'll, we'll cover that more often and, and in some sort of maybe uh, tutorials I can sort of sit down with you and go off that. But what I want you to, to sorry, look at... Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, what are you calculating? So the operating surplus is the income. Um, I think it's I'm, it's probably going to cover in my um, my notes further on. Okay. So we'll, we'll do that there. All I want you to do is just to get your headings right and your layout. But in this vineyard expenses, so I'm just trying to find yeah here we are. It's ninety thousand. So I've broken it down into this sort of order. So this is your labour expenses, and I've broken it down for for all of those things there. And then you have your fertiliser. So if you if you follow that format or that order, that that is the way to go. So they are the total working expenses, and then you've got your sort of standard charges, which is your rates, which you'll know. Um, insurance, um, yeah, the accountancy costs, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So all I'm saying is when you when you actually lay out your budget, have it in that format. That's a, a standard format, and that's what bank, bankers, etc., will recognise as well. You know, rather than uh, having, having it in that order. Sure. Do you want to add to that, John? Yeah, a couple of things. Um, do you have a template that they could use rather than having to get spreadsheets to do it themselves, or are they, you know, freely available on such a thing as that? Um, I don't know where there is one. Um, okay. All right. But I could. I could draw one up for them. If, I, yeah, I'm just trying to think of... Because this, this isn't a test to test how good they are on Excel. Exactly. So I'm just trying to think of saving them time. To, yeah. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. I'll put something together for you on that. Okay. okay. The other thing is just to just to try and... I'm just trying to put myself in a position of, of not knowing anything about this. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking there's a number of sort of term, terminology in there that could be a little bit confusing. Mm -hmm. Use some of these guys. Um, whether it's worth just pointing out that so effectively all that to do is looking at all your costs, all your income, and taking one away from the other. Yep, yep. And there's lots of fancy words in there. Yeah, there's, there's, yeah, there's a bit of jargon and, yeah. and stuff like that, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that. And what I suggest okay. you do is I'll um, give you the acronyms and then we'll you know, create a bit of a glossary there with your notes and what I'm talking about. Yeah. And what that page effectively there does is to split your costs overhead costs, mm -hmm. your overhead's the things that you, I'm correct to call this one, if I'm saying it yeah. but, but overhead costs are things that, whether you produce grapes or not, those costs are always there. Okay? If you operate that business and run that business, you've always you've got to have an accountant, you've got to have communications, ACC, what else, cost yeah. insurance, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Okay, so whether you, whether you grow any grapes or get any other, in, do anything else at all, those yeah. overheads are always there. Exactly right. And, and, and yeah, and so what you're going to do when you do your budget, you're going to have to do, basically you're going to do, um, you're going to have 
five tabs basically. You can have year one, year two, year three, four and five. And, and John's exactly right. So the first year, all those, these costs here, total, um, from here to here, that, they're always going to be there every year, 12,000 a year, no matter, and you can have no income, but you can have no expenses either, because you're, sorry, you can have capital expenses or, or development expenses, but you can have no income. So that, that's, that's a gimme every year. So, so that's always going to be there. Um, yeah. And then above that, you have what these various names given to it. Yeah, running costs or cost of production. Cost of production. That, that's a good one actually, because that's the cost of actually producing a product. In this case, your own drone. So it's your sprays, it's your pruning, it's your trimming, it's all the operations that you've got to do to produce a drone. If you weren't producing any drones, if you weren't growing any vines, you wouldn't have those costs. Mm. Okay. And, and it's a good one. For comparison of gross margin compared to do I put apples on here or do I put do I put grapes? So um, in in the um, apple production, you know, has uh, is, there's a certain cost structure for that. So that's what you, you do here. So that yeah, exactly right. Cost of production is a, is a really good one here. Okay. wanting to show you the layout, um, but I'll, I'll probably will help you on that, um, or I can do that to set up a suggested layout there. But you, what I'd suggest you do is, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Okay, so let's just go back to the presentation. So, well, I think we got up to here, really. Uh, pointer. Um, yeah, so using previous financial statements and publications, which um, John's going to have the 2012, so that's going to be really good. Um, it says take into account inflation. Um, you might just add your cost, add 1 or 2% per year for that. Um, exchange rate, um, you're getting into dangerous territory trying to predict what that's going to be. So really you've just got on to go on what the facts are today. So, CFB, just a little acronym there. There's Cash Forecast Budget, okay? That's what that stands for. Um, I'll call it TVI, I call it TFI because I'm so used to dealing with pastoral guys, but that's Total Vineyard Income. And then uh, VWE is vineyard working expenses, so that's all the expenses, including those standing charges. I'll just rub that out. What you will, and what I won't kind of do, I'll, I'll lay out the basic template of the budget, but what you are going to have to do is have some schedules in there, uh, which I'm going to come to. But, um, so basically, BVI, total vineyard income, minus VWE is um, for operating surplus. Surplus, whatever that is. And then you're going to have um, interest, tax, oh, lease, there might be some lease. Then you're going to have drawings what you're going to take out of the business, and then you're going to have um, or what you need to live off, basically. Because in those first couple of years, yeah, oh, we'll come to that, um, the taxation, and then we might have what we call plant replacement, or you might need to, and that sort of covers depreciation. What I'm saying there is that you might have a, um, I don't know, a four-wheeler or something that you run around on. So you don't replace that every year, but you should be setting aside or, or allowing in your budget um, five or ten grand to be to be there to, to you know every three or four years you might replace your four wheeler so you might have a plant replacement allowance of five five thousand dollars or something like that per year so so again if the total vineyard income is a hundred thousand vineyard working expenses um, John correct me if I'm wrong but 
Um, are they running about, well, once you're up and running, they're only about 40 or 50% aren't they? Of your, sorry? Of your total income, your vineyard income? Um, Yeah, sorry. Okay. Well, actually, you'd be able to work that out off that, that information I gave you, roughly what it is. But let's just say it's it's uh, fifty percent. So that's fifty thousand. So your operating surplus is fifty thousand. You want to get lower off. Yep. Yeah. Now your interest, whatever you've borrowed, but say you've borrowed two hundred thousand. Now today's rate, you might get it at six percent, but you might want to talk to the banks and ask them what what interest rate should I be using long term? But they're probably going to tell you probably seven and a half percent. So two hundred thousand of that's what fifteen thousand. Um, your drawings might be, you know, well twenty five is very low, um, and if if you're drawing only twenty five thousand, is um, yeah, you've probably got a van or. Dutch name, something like that, you're living pretty frugally, but for a normal average drawings probably would be about 50,000. Well actually that's going to not make that stack up, we'll, we'll say it's only 30,000. Um, your taxation, which, do you want me to go through how they how to work out taxation or not? Because it's really only going to, you're going to have a lot of tax losses coming through. Tax isn't going to be an issue for you in, in the first five years, I wouldn't have thought. Um, Pretty simple calculation, and we, we can come back to that. We can factor that in later. But yeah, and so anyway, so fifty thousand take fifteen off forty five five. Well, the uh, he's actually break even, so he's, yeah, it's zero. There's nothing in the bottom there because he hasn't paid any tax. But and so that's that's your surplus. That's your your total cash deficit, or what do we call cash deficit surplus. I just made, I just made that yeah, up. So yeah, that's what I'm trying to realise. You were yeah. saying that you break it even. Yeah, you well break. Well, yeah, yeah you should right. be. There should be some tax in there. You'd be paying yeah. tax on that. Yeah, you'd actually be making a loss. yourself a wage up above. You see, <coughs> you, you would take drawings out of the company. Um, if you, um, Damien asked me a few moments ago, uh, are we allowed to do work ourselves in this? And therefore, do we cost that in? Um, I'm just thinking to simplify this whole process, why don't we just say no to that question and say you have to assume you contract everything out. Everything out. Yep. Now, in that case, you wouldn't pay yourself a salary, as a, a, draw, a salary drawing, because you're not doing anything. But if you're effectively if you're managing the business, it's like a management fee, fee yeah. isn't it? In, in, in effect, which really you, you'd be paying yourself. But like, if he gets a contract, Aaron, or does it himself, doesn't matter. But as long as he's got the contract rate in there. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So if, if, if Damien pays himself as the owner of the business. Company structure. That's that's a good way to. Um, yeah, that's probably a good way to go. Actually. Yeah. So I'm just thinking: is that do we put it in, or, or just do we remove that from the equation because it's it's you know, it's, it's a physical exercise we want to concentrate. Yeah, exactly. On, um, and just say forget the fact. Pay hey, even in contract, and you're not taking it. You're taking everything out. You personally are not taking anything out, but then yeah, I mean it makes it a little bit unrealistic because then there's no management cost in there. There would be, you know, especially if you're running a 15, 20 hectare vineyard. Well, I think it's something we forgot here. If 
we're contract growers, and I got a contract with you. What are the terms of the contract? I'm going to be able to draw against that. So if you if you say, okay, Damien, I'm going to I want all your grapes. Yeah. I'm going to give you three hundred dollars a ton. Yeah. Do I get one paycheck a year, or is oh that well, we'll, we'll come on. Come on, come on. Okay, okay, that's that's part of that cash flow. As I say. Yeah. You, 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 well, that, that's exactly where we're going to come to. We're going to go into cash flow. Like all we're talking about now is the budget. So that's the whole income and the expenses for the year. Right, the next thing we've got to do, and you hit a really good point, is when does this all come in? Because that's when you're going to have to make arrangements for an overdraft. I tell you what, for, let, let's call it. Um, let's say the company has one employee. Whether it's the person who, yeah, sort of yeah, what, what employee of which those drawings, and, and, that, and that, yeah, because that's might be included in here. So it, so it, you know, one employee, and we'll we'll set a figure for, yep. you know, with what would you pay a manager, you know, I don't know, anything, forty, fifty thousand a year, you know, pick a figure and put that in as, as the budget figure for that. Yeah, one thing I um, alluded or didn't sort of mention, which is can be a little bit of a trap. Um, when we were doing that comparison in values, is I sort of use the point here is effective area, and it sort of talks about that um, no defective area. Now, on those sales that I gave you, and we, you know, they were between seventy thousand and you know, or sixty thousand a hectare. I just did that on the total area. What you've got to be careful of. And look, you'll pick it up on those photos when you when you go and have a look at the rates for months. Is what what the effective area is because that's um, what you're making your money off. And if I compare two vineyards, here's a vineyard here, and it's um, you know here's your rows here. It's all effective. Whereas um, vineyard B, well, is is like that as well. But it's got a creek running through it, and there's actually it's on the um, foot of a hill. So that that's actually hill. So they might be the same size, 15 hectares, but that actually might only be 12 effective hectares. So hedging, you gotta got take off for hedging. Yeah, yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, or, yeah, hedging, or, or just main significant areas there, yeah. So that creek is, is kind of waste, but it's not waste, but it's there. But when you're valuing, ineffective, if you can't make any income off it, most valuers just value it at you know, $100 a hectare or something like that. Okay, so just be careful about you know what what's effective and what's not, especially when you're comparing when you're doing all your analysis there. Yeah, so it's just it's what it's what we effectively call in this sort of canopy area. Canopy area. Yeah. Yep. And you know you'll, I, I'll be going through next week how to accurately measure areas on Google Earth. Yep. Um, and you know in one way of getting around that is to measure the actual area of vineyard. So talking about schedules, what, what you are going to need to do, and you're going to need to show that in, 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 a, is in, separate, in a separate tab. And what I mean by schedules, and I think we'll just give you an example of one. Yeah. Oh, that's an animal health one. Yeah, oh, well, that's a tree one there. Oh, sorry, I haven't done a vineyard one, but you're just going to have to work out, well, say for your pruning, um, or... Um, the labour cost, you might work out exactly how many vines you've got. Um, so that's the number of vines. Um, and that's uh, pruning and that's thinning, etc. And just put in your rates there. And then obviously times the rate by the number of vines and that'll give you the cost. So that's the schedule. So we'll want to see a few of those sort of schedules, which you, you, you will need to make up yourself. I mean, they're pretty simple, but as long as they feed into your budget, so you, so you understand that. Uh, spraying might be a schedule, might do a spraying schedule. Um, have. Effectively, it's, it's up to you guys how you put that information together. Now that mass monitoring report breaks down things like uh, pruners, for instance, they've got a cost in here for Hawke's Bay for 2012. Um, the pruners cost per vine was 51 cents. Now, you can use that information, but beware, that's an average all the data they collected, different vineyard sizes, that's the average pruning cost per vine. Now, for instance, that doesn't take account of whether it was 2 kg SP, whether it was 
three or four canes, whether it's spur through and cane through, etc. Yeah. Et there it's are, average. There are going to be costs like that where you have to put more force into it. Now, obviously, there are costs there, for instance, electricity or vehicle costs. You can perhaps just take some of those straight out and drop them in. But the specific costs like pruning or like uh, trimming, for instance, or leaf plucking, you're going to have to put these kind of safety squares in place. So that relates directly back to the way you're going to run the vineyard and the quality It's good, we're clarifying a few things today, aren't we? We've got about 10 minutes. Oh, okay, yep. I mean, don't rush it forward. You can no, no, no. Um, right next week. Yeah, exactly. And, and I'm happy to do some extra, you know, if there's time available, I'm happy to do some extra hours here. Um, what are we saying here? So, yeah. Now, the other thing just to remember when you're doing everything here, everything's done on a GST.